EU law has been uh, um, at the forefront of uh, the regulations of, uh, if not tax and data mining, because we know that uh, for different reasons, the US, Japan, uh, many other countries have regulated tax and data mining much earlier and much more broadly. Certainly in the case of the AI, the AI Act is uh, probably the first uh, consistent uh, uh, and general uh, approach to regulating AI, uh, I would say in the world probably. The element of machine learning and the relationship uh, uh, with copyright is present, and uh, this is a good thing. Um, probably, you know, we are in a situation where maybe the EU moved, uh, um, you know, very early and uh, uh, developed a, a legal framework whereby tax and data mining and machine learning are regulated the same. Um, and now perhaps uh, one of the answers that could be considered in order to creating more space, more breathing space, particularly for scientific research, is to treat them differently. Um, it is not easy uh, to give uh, a specific answer on how to do this. Uh, uh, we are all working uh, on, on these and similar questions, of course. Uh, certainly, uh, there are certain um, uh, fundamental principles uh, grounded in uh, the uh, you know human uh, rights recognized at the national and European uh, uh, constitutional level uh, that should be embedded in these uh, legislative choices. Um, obviously, the protection of research and the freedom of uh, of uh, scientific research and uh, uh, and uh, uh, artistic uh, expression are very important and therefore we have to design rules that do not uh, um, prevent uh, um, scientists but also uh, um, other you know citizens in general to uh, to be able to experiment with these tools uh, on the other hand we have to make sure that when these tools are used uh, uh, to uh, to um, create, uh, I call them perfect substitutes into the creative uh, uh, industry market, there are effective remedies. Um, I don't think that uh, regulating input, uh, so the training data, has uh, the ability to be granular enough to distinguish these very two different uh, situations. So my guess is that uh, uh, if we imagine a situation where we start from training data, we go through the machine learning magic, then there are the input data, meaning the data that the user of the AI system, you know, when you have your, um, you choose which AI you use uh, on your phone and you type citing, that's your input, and then you have the output. Right now we regulate everything at the input level, probably we have to move our regulatory focus down this uh, uh, this avenue and look more at uh, the input uh, uh, data and uh, and output data there is a third element that i think is a bit new uh, at least uh, gets a new kind of uh, uh, attention which is the protection of of style and genre Traditionally, copyright doesn't protect uh, um, a, a genre or, or a school. You know, you could, uh, uh, you, you cannot be considered infringing copyright uh, because you paint something in a following a cubist uh, uh, um, style, so to speak. Um, naturally, if you copy a painting by a cubist artist, then the answer is different. That's infringing. Um, however, due to the scale of uh, AI applications, so there is a danger uh, raised by, by uh, right holders and some artists that this will create a, a substitution effect where the substitution is not with the creative work, but with a specific artist or school or genre. This, I think, is a bit of a new question, and maybe remuneration uh, um, models, which have been proposed in the scholarship, could be an interesting avenue to explore.